Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel, Our Silver Moments. My name is Colleen and if you're this is your first time visiting here, then welcome to the channel. And today I am going to work on a bolognese sauce for pasta. Now this is probably not going to be traditional in any way, shape or form, uh, but it's how we like to do it here at our house sometimes. We add peppers to it and other things, but this is kind of the basic pasta sauce that I use, the meat sauce that I use uh, when we're cooking and making uh, pasta and meat sauce for a meal. So I've got uh, things nearby. I'm going to gather them up and bring them over here so that we can get started and I will be right back after this. started off we're going to just need a few ingredients um, most of my sauces begin with um, celery and carrots and onions and this one is no different and I don't want big pieces of the carrots and celery and onions in the sauce in fact it's super nice if they just disappear all together but certainly you need the flavor in there to uh, just give that sauce some depth. You know you've made a good sauce when people ask you yeah, what's, what's in it because they can't really tell the difference. Uh, they'll taste it and they'll go, oh yeah, I recognize there's carrots in there. Um, this bolognese is nice if you can cook it until there is no evidence of just the flavor um, that's what's left. That's it. And this isn't a hard uh, sauce to do at all. And I think it would be a great sauce for beginners as well. And I have here three stalks of celery and I've just run my knife down them lengthwise and I'm chopping them probably in quarter inch or smaller pieces. And I've just got a bowl to the side here. I'm going to grab so that I can put these things in as I work along. And because they're all going to end up in the same pot together. And they'll cook at the same rate. So I'm just going to continue to add to that. Now I have four, I'd say medium sized to small carrots. And I am just going to peel them quickly and we'll get ready to do the same thing to them that we did to the celery. Now this uh, bolognese can you know, really be as long or as short as you want it to be as far as cooking time goes. I will probably not cook it more than an hour but you can cook it up to four hours. The reason that I'm not cooking it longer than an hour is that it's tomato heavy. And if tomato gets too hot for too long, it takes on a bit bitter taste. And so I will do this today um, in a pot on the stove and just simmer it quietly at the back of the stove once I've got it all going. And, um, but you could put it in your crock pot and put it on low and cook it for uh, four hours or longer if you know if that's if that's what your day looks like. Um, sometimes we have the luxury of putting uh, our food in for a long period of time. Or I shouldn't say the luxury. Sometimes we have the luxury of being at home and being able to spend time stirring the pot and spending time over it. Um, sometimes we do not. We have to get up in the morning and go to work and we're gone all day. So whatever works for you in your situation, that's what you should be doing. So keep an eye on it. Be mindful about it if you can. If not, put it on the lowest setting and be gone for the day as you need to be. 
I find it a real luxury to be at home these days after years of working away from home and um, years of getting to work and going, oh my goodness, I forgot to take anything out for dinner and going through that and the guilt that comes with, um, you know, not being able to provide the, th the meals on the table that I would like to have been because then when I ran home from work, I certainly wasn't giving it my best effort. And I have a very uh, wonderful husband who's not afraid to cook. And we have a deal that whoever's home first cooked. That was when I was still working. Um, but he puts in really long days. He's on the road in a truck. And there's no reason for him now to come home and not have dinner ready because we're a partnership, we're a team. He's doing his part of it by going out to the job every day and I'm doing my part by keeping the home fires burning. And I'm sure that lots of you watching feel the same way and feel privileged to be able to be part of a partnership and, and uh, have meals ready when our partners come home from work. I'm just going to finish off these carrots and then we'll move on to the onions. And now I've got one medium onion. This can be any onion of your choice. I buy them, I'm not sure what kind they are quite honestly. If a recipe calls for a particular variety of onion I'll try to find that variety but otherwise I just buy my onions and three or five pound bags and um, I'm never really sure what they are. So sometimes you get a surprise. So I'm going to do the same thing with this onion that I've done with the, um, the carrots and the celery. I'm just going to um, chop it into smaller pieces because we don't need to have big pieces of onion either. And we're going to cook these in the pot until they almost melt away. So we'll get so much flavor by doing that. Now, as I said before, I, I don't know if this is traditional or not. This was just the way I was taught to do it and I've added a few things to it. Well, there's the surprise in that onion. It looked mild, but it's not. Jeez, not. So I'm not crying. Well, yeah, I am, but I'm not sad. That is one hot little onion. And I'll just do up the rest of this. And then we'll go over to the stove and get this started. Now, after this is cooked for about 10 minutes, these vegetables in the pot then we'll be adding the meat and uh, for the bolognese I always use half pork and half beef um, that may come from our farm days but both my husband and I enjoy that blend for things like meatballs and um, bolognese sauce They're, they each bring a different flavor to the dish Oof. And there we go. Let's move over to the stove. Now to the big frying pan, I'm going to add some olive oil. And then I'm going to add in this uh, mirepoix or the onions, celery, and carrots. And I'm using carrots in here for their flavor. And they also have sugar in them so it kind of takes away the bitterness from the tomatoes if you happen to have tomatoes that are a little on the harsh side I haven't had some sugars added to them or something this this really helps with that so we're going to um, continue to watch this and stir it and uh, once it's down to where we need to add the meat I'll bring you back and we'll move on to that step 
Now I'm just going to, you can see that there's little bits of browning happening on the vegetables. So I am going to get ready to put the beef in and I'm going to turn it back up to the higher setting because when I put the uh, meat in, it's going to definitely cool the pan. So this is one pound of pork and it's going to, I'm going to come in with a pound of beef and I am going to stir this around good and get this meat cooking in here as well. And it will take some time for this all to cook down. I can hear my pan and you can I'm sure hear my pan, but it is getting hotter. So I am going to spend some time with it right now and just keep stirring it and breaking these pieces of meat up. You don't want big chunky bits. And uh, for those of you that are looking in this pan and going, oh my gosh, that's a lot, you're absolutely right. So uh, this is one of those things that you can cook and freeze. You can definitely freeze the sauce just by itself and then pour it out the night before and let it thaw in the fridge overnight and then cook the pasta fresh and from one time cooking, you have at least two meals. Now you may even, um, if you're alone, this is probably six meals for you. So uh, following the recipe that, as, as I have here, um, this could definitely uh, generate a lot of meals for you. Um, you could have this with pasta. Um, some people have it over bread. So whatever um, you enjoy having bolognese sauce over, or even if you just like to eat it out of a bowl with a spoon, we used to say otherwise, right? Now, you could also take your bolognese sauce, pop it in a pot, and add a cup of chicken broth to it, and or maybe two cups of chicken broth. No, sorry, beef broth. Use beef broth. And um, a bit of rice or um, some pasta that you've broken into little pieces and you've got yourself some soup. So it can be quite versatile. So, yeah, don't be put off by the amount in the pan. Unless what you're looking for is just one meal and then you'll just have to do the math and figure out how to make everything um, into smaller batches. But uh, if you, I don't know about you, but if I can get away with cooking once and eating two or three times, that's what I, I will absolutely do. Now, it's starting to cook down, but see there's still water in the pan. Now that's coming off the vegetables and the meat. It's the meat piece. So we are going to continue to stir this and move it until the water is all absorbed. Now we've got most of that steamed off here. And I am just going to add about a half a cup of white wine. It could be red wine. It could be whatever kind of wine you prefer. Uh, this just adds a little something to it and it does not have to have wine in it at all. At this point, if you prefer not to have uh, wine in it or add alcohol to it at all, then you could certainly um, use the recipe just as is or add a tablespoon of Worcestershire or Chestershire sauce. And uh, that would also give you that interesting little flavor note in the background. I'm just going to cook until we're back to the same boat where we don't have a lot of moisture in the pan, where it's drained, where it's dry. That means that it has burned off or it's been absorbed into the meat. Now, I'm going to do a switcheroo because I'm going to dump this into the big pot because it will definitely hold it better than this pan will. So 
I'll bring you back and I've done that. Now I've just turned the pot down a little because I can feel it in there sticking away, which is good. Now we're building some flavor in the bottom of this pot. It's time to add some seasoning in here, so I'm going to start by adding a couple of cloves of garlic. And I'm using my press for that, but you do it however you like. I, again, I want it to, you know, more or less disappear. And uh, melt away into the sauce. I'm going to add some tomato paste because we want this to have a really nice deep rich flavor. So I'm going to use probably this whole entire can of tomato paste. It's, I would say, a five ounce can. I so far have added no salt to this and the tomato paste is also no salt added. And you can see already the color is changing. I hope you can see. I hope our lens isn't all stained up. Now, I am going to add, this is some of our homemade tomato juice from 2021. I'm going to add a couple of jars of that. I do them in small jars so that they're available for us to just drink, uh, if that's what we want to do with them. But I do like to add it to soups and stews as well. And the tomato juice, we made it um, from small tomatoes, so the little mini tomatoes. What do we call those guys? We made it with them, and we roasted them in the oven with garlic on the tray and just um, some olive oil. And oh man, did, they, did it ever turn out good. We, the tomatoes themselves were so yummy, but when we tasted the juice, we said, why? I'm going to add one more. Why are we wasting that delicious juice? So I canned the juice and um, I just splashed that all over the front of myself for your information. <laughs> and we canned the juice and it um, turned out fantastic. So um, I'm sure that if you have an opportunity to roast your tomatoes in the oven, you should definitely do that. Make sure you have a pan that's got high sides. Uh, these are some tomatoes that I recanned from some that we had bought, purchased in the city. Uh, these are from last year. And yes, my rings are on all my jars because I am old school that way and I don't take them off. I know all the warnings say otherwise and sometimes I do, but uh, most of the time, well, quite honestly, I don't take them off. It's one of those old school things. It's my kitchen, my rules, right? Okay, now I am going to add to this some, well, almost the last of my parsley that I dehydrated last year. I'm going to add some of that, just crumble it in. And I am going to add about a tablespoon of um, oregano and I'm going to stir it and see if it needs more moisture in there. I'm going to taste it. I'll go get a spoon and taste it to see if we need to uh, season it. 
um, because the tomatoes are seasoned and um, so forth, then I don't want to over season. So now's the time to check it. So I'm going to just check it. It's sure thick. Definitely needs salt. So right now I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt that I'm just measuring in the palm of my hand. And I'm going to give that a stir. And I'm going to taste it again and see where it's at. I don't want to over salt it at this point because as it sits and everything reduces, it is definitely going to um, be more enhanced because the juices have reduced. Mm, that's better. I think I will add one more jar of um, tomato juice to it and then I'm going to set my stove down to two, which is the lowest setting, and I'm going to let this cook for an hour. I'll bring you back when it's finished. Here I am back and here's this beautiful sauce. It is absolutely luscious. The flavor is so good. The veg vegetables are all cooked perfectly tender. And as you can see, the water is boiling on the other burner for me to drop down some pasta. And so I'm going to do that right now. And once that's cooked, I'll show you how we're going to plate this up for dinner. So come back folks. Well, here it all is. I've got the uh, beautiful bolognese sauce made here, and I am not even going to pretend and put this in a bowl. I'm just going to scoop out a helping from my strainer and just going to put some noodles onto the plate. And then I am going to scoop the sauce because normally I would, if I was making a regular batch, I would um, mix the noodles right in to the uh, sauce. But because I've made extra sauce in here, I don't want to put the noodles in. So this is what it looks like when I serve it. I'll pile up some cheese on top of there. And that's what's for dinner tonight in our house. Um, pasta bolognese. Hope you guys have enjoyed this and if you have that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I hope that you'll share this with your friends and that you'll give the video a like or a thumbs up and I will be back again soon with another video and thank you so much for watching. Take care everybody. Bye bye.